Oliver, the great western engine, had come to enjoy his new home on the island of Sodor, but he still had a lot to learn about how to be a really useful engine. He was prone to arrogance, especially when others complimented him on his good work. I pull coaches just like Gordon. Duck said so, Oliver had said one day after he had pulled a long, full passenger train up the line. Toad, his ever faithful brake band, wanted Oliver to feel important, but also tried very hard to keep him humble. One day with patience, perhaps you will be more like Gordon. Oliver didn't always like this, but he knew that Toad was looking out for his best interests. This made their friendship very strong indeed. One night, a terrible storm ripped through the Little Western, bringing fierce winds and lashing rain, which made Duck, Oliver and the Scottish twins very worried. In the morning, they found bridges swept away and whole stretches of line buried in sand and debris. This made the engines feel very sad. What will happen to our passengers? Duck asked the Topham Hat, who had come to survey the damage. We will have to go by a bush until we can repair the line. In the meantime, we'll have to send each of you to another part of the railway. The engines hated to leave their beloved branch line, but they knew it was for the best. Don't worry, piped in Toad from the siding. The branch line will be better than ever before. You'll see. It was decided that Duck and the twins should go to help the big engines, while Oliver was to be sent with tow to Edward's branch line, where help was needed to take the China clay to the harbour on time. Bill and Ben are at the works after a recent mischievous incident, the quarry, Edward chuckled as he showed Oliver the sidings. Burger is strong, but it can take only so many trucks at a time. I had to stay here to manage the yard here, and don't worry, Oliver smiled, I'll help as much as I can while I'm here. That's the spirit, said Edward, but be careful, the China clear trucks are prone to mischief. Don't worry, Edward, I've learned more about trucks since I fell into the turntable well. Of course, Oliver. I don't mean to ramble, but Edward was trying to warn Oliver. The China clay trucks were not like common trucks. They were intelligent, clever, tricky, and most of all, cunning. If an engine did not do right by then, there was no telling the length that the trucks would go to get even. What Oliver didn't realize was that the China clay trucks already had quite a considerable grudge against him. They had heard how Oliver had pulled Scruffy to pieces and vowed to pay him out. He's a brute, they chatted. Yes, yes, we'll make him pay. But how? One of the wagons had an idea. There's only one way to tame a brute. What, what? the wagons asked. Sweet him up, and when he least expect it, will bring him down to size. The trucks sniggered to each other. Yes, we'll pull him apart. Oliver backed down on the trucks none the wiser that he was heading for trouble. Toad, a couple to the end of the train, had a peculiar feeling about the trucks. Now, Mr. Oliver, perhaps we should have listened to what Mr. Edward had to say. It never hurts to be a little more cautious. Toad, I know how to handle trucks. Toad sighed. Sometimes Oliver could be rather stubborn. Perhaps it was best not to jump to conclusions and let Oliver try. Sir? 
soon they were on their way to the harbour with the China clay trucks. Oliver was surprised at how easily they came. This was of course part of the trucks' plan, but Oliver didn't know this. Look at how strong Oliver is, the wagon said. It's a pleasure to go out with him. Yes, you're pulling us better than any other engine has before. This struck toad is a very strange thing for trucks for say to an engine. But it was having the desired effect on Oliver who was beginning to feel cocky. I am pulling you better than any other engine. Perhaps I should take Bill and Ben's place, he chuckled. The trucks smiled to each other. You are much stronger than Bill and Ben. Yes, he's the strongest of them all. The trucks continued to shower Oliver with flattery all the way to the harbour. By then Oliver was feeling quite arrogant. This is easy, Oliver said. Look at everyone smiling at me. I must be a sight to behold. You will be a sight to behold, said the trucks. But Toad could tell that their tone had changed. He wanted to say something, but he knew that Oliver wouldn't listen. Then it happened. Oliver the strong engine! So strong that he tore Scruffy apart! The trucks surged forward. Oliver put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. Ahead the line curved around towards the siding, and beyond the sidings was the sea. Not so strong now, are you, Oliver? The trucks goffered. But Oliver was slowing down, but not soon enough. He crashed through the buffers and dangled precariously over the edge. Then Oliver felt a jerk and the train stopped. Toad, red in the face, had braked harder than he had ever had before. Soon another engine came to help pull Oliver, Toad and the China Clay Wagons back to safety. Sir Topham Hat came to see what the matter was. Oliver, your brake man George saved you from a nasty accident. You should be very thankful. Oliver truly was, but he was confused at what had happened. Mr Oliver, you became too conceited to see that the tracks were playing an awful trick on you. I did it again, did toy, sighed Oliver. Perhaps in the future, Mr. Oliver, you should recognise that if you do not keep your wits about you and stay humble, that others can take advantage of you. Oliver smiled. He knew Toad was right, and that he was giving his advice as a friend, even if what he had to say wasn't always what Oliver wanted to hear. I suppose I need to listen to my faithful brief van more, Oliver laughed. I think that's a wonderful idea, Mr. Oliver. You'll find that though I can't do much, I can at least be a good friend and have your back when, er, uh, trucks tried to push you into the sea. The two chuckled and began to make their way back to Edward Station.